I just want to uh, take uh, where uh, Pranjoy has uh, brought the whole discussion to. But I feel that uh, our topic today, uh, and which is directly connected what you have shown uh, in the beginning, that how we have come down eight ladders down, and now India stands at 150, uh, India's crackdown on free speech. So what I feel that uh, what is happening to us as a journalist is not uh, uh, what is happening in isolation in India. Basically, it's a mirror image of what is happening to democracy in India. All the democratic institutions, the way uh, they are being bulldozed, because bulldozer is a symbol of justice in India now. That's the biggest irony that shows that the, in the, the kind of instant justice, that instant justice, those who are in power, they have the right to do instant justice. So if the person is a journalist, they are on the target. If a person is a worker, he's on the target. If I'm a woman, I'm a target. And I'm targeted by multiple agencies, not only the government agencies. Now we have, while I'm discussing with you, there's a very disturbing image which is coming, which I feel as a media person, as an India citizen, as a woman, I feel that now there are forces which want to take us back to a medieval era of barbarism. They come openly and speak that we want a Hindu Rashtra. An elected representative is there, sitting there. One of the so-called journalists who is heading a, a, a TV news channel, Sudarshan TV, Su, uh, Suresh Chauhan, he is making the pledge and everybody is taking the pledge that, okay, we will sacrifice for the Hindu Rashtra. So this is the scene when, uh, in which we are discussing now. Uh, and uh, at the same time, I just want to say that uh, the way uh, freedom of expression, and as Daniel uh, uh, rightly put in this very important report, the kind of self-censorship, you find that we have a news that Adani became the fifth one in the world. But how he became the fifth one? You find that the last seven, eight years, almost the investigative journalism is killed. There is no discussion on the corporate route which is happening. We all are afraid to report how so many drugs, such a huge amount of drug landed in Adani's port. While you are placing, you have to think um, uh, 10 times and then your uh, where agencies you are working, they have to think thousand times and the story will be dropped. So this kind of uh, intimidation and the kind of environment which has been made as a woman journalist, the kind of violence we have to face, the kind of trolling we have to face, and there is no agency where you can go and address and report. Nothing is going. They are openly selling us. They have sully deals, they have bully deals, they have trolling agencies who just want to curtail all those uh, women who want to report, who want to write, who want to come openly, speak truth. And the irony is that when we are talking attack on the free speech, when all these are happening, not a single agency or not a single pillar of the democracy, be it executive, be it judiciary, be it the whole uh, different uh, systems which are there in the place, no one will come to rescue you. That's the biggest fear, what I feel that uh, the country is surrounded by. So that's, uh, and it is across the country. You find the Kashmiri journalist, the way the Kashmiri press club has been crushed, the way uh, Kashmiri journalists are working, I salute to them. The young women journalists, photographers, how daring they are, how way they are reporting. It is unprecedented, I don't know how it is happening in other countries, but the way they are still reporting. You go to the Northeast, so less news is there, but kind of UAPs on journalists. It's unimaginable. That's, they have, I just went for my reporting to Manipur when the elections were there. And all the journalists, the way they were talking to me and they were saying that, okay, you came from Delhi, it's okay, but the way if we report uh, from the ground, uh, we are the 0.3% of the total population of the India. And when you come to the decorian laws, like UAPA and sedition, we are on the fourth number. So this is what is happening and it is spreading across. 
the way uh, Pranjay mentioned about uh, uh, thing in, uh, happened in uh, Balia, uh, that is uh, Uttar Pradesh. So those are at least the news which are coming where there is a resistance, there is a resilience, those we know about it. But what about those journalists who reported this, this basic minimum reporting that there's a hunger death? It's impossible right now to report a hunger death now because then the FIR will be on you. The way uh, it has been reported uh, from uh, Pradhan Mantri, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, constituency, a very young journalist reported that uh, people from uh, marginalized community, the Dalit community, they are eating, they don't have anything to eat, they are eating grass. And today you see the uh, present condition, how he is suffering, his whole family is uh, gone. And there is no system which is there, there is no organizational support which is there for such a widespread uh, young journalist who want to save uh, journalism, basically. You see that there's a very clear-cut divide one is the corporate media, definitely, which has a complete ownership. And now the two big shots, Ambani is holding the media, Adani is also into it now. But there are a lot of new portals, news portals who are working, uh, young journalists, women journalists, Dalit journalists, Adivasi journalists. When uh, Pranjay was talking, I was thinking about uh, Rupesh, who comes from a very uh, tribal background. The way he was targeted, the way he was put, I, I'm just reading his book, how he suffered uh, during the jail, when he was in the jail. Who were the people who came in uh, his support when we talk about the tribals, uh, their human rights. So the basic, what I feel that this, uh, the condition of the media, the way it has been uh, attacked and the way it has been uh, bulldozed, uh, it is uh, a direct connect what is happening uh, how the uh, Indian democracy is under great threat of a Hindu fascist state. That if I want to report what is happening in Jahangirpuri, where uh, that is a place in uh, national capital Delhi, the way the demolition we have seen, uh, I think this Ramzan, this whole period of uh, Ramzan was the most horrible period uh, I have ever seen, where the Muslims have been targeted across the country and there was very less reporting and in the corporate media, the reporting was from the other end. So basically the voice of the voiceless is almost out. And I just want to put one more thing that last uh, uh, seven, eight years, the media or the corporate media has been turned into narrative building industry. Basically it will set the narrative for the government for the policymakers, for the right-wing shift of the economy. So everything which stands for the poor is bad. Everything which stands in the favor of women is bad. Everything which stands in the support of free speech is bad. It's, it has been painted as uh, black. So uh, painted as uh, bad, sorry. So this uh, the whole perception building, because media during the Corona time also we have seen and that was the worst time when we have seen during the Corona period, that how this uh, corporate media turned into a very ugly face of uh, narrative uh, setting industry, where the mainstream or the so-called corporate media, TV channels, newspapers, everyone was spreading lie and the kind of fake news is being spread in those TV channels, news channels, studio, there is no system to check. They don't repent. Uh, just now there is a uh, case uh, going on against you know, one TV channel anchor, Network 18. He said uh, he has given a false news. He's tried to spread communal uh, um, uh, tension uh, by misreporting. But you see, there is no agency uh, as such who can check that this is, that, that work is being done uh, by Alt News, which is uh, run by Pratik and similar other groups. So this condition, I think that this uh, is a mirror image, what is happening to uh, uh, free speech, what is happening to women journalists, what is happening to Dalit journalists, what is happening to Muslim journalists, uh, what is happening to journalism in general, uh, is a mirror image what is happening to our democracy in India. And as all the institutions are falling and keeping silent with the fascist in onslaught, uh, that is happening. And I was just want to close with one uh, positive sign. 
that is still the voices within the media, the young who are writing from the remotes, from the different parts, not from the big metros, their number has not reduced, their voice, in spite of being FIRs, it, is, uh, it's, 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 uh, it has not withered away. And the way the resistance has been put in Uttar Pradesh place, Balia, where the whole uh, city came together for three journalists who have been arrested. So I, I think Pamela is there and Puranjo is there, they can correct me. This kind of resistance where the whole city went on a strike, that unless and until you release our journalist, uh, we are not going to follow you. And then they forced the state to uh, make the release, take out those uh, um, uh, cases which have been put. But the sad point is that when it happens to Siddiq Kappan, when it happens to other marginalized group, this kind of uh, solidarity, this kind of resistance is missing. So here I close, thanks. Just one point I just wanted to make that uh, uh, the discussion which uh, we are having today, it's directly what I feel that uh, it's connected from the shameless denial from the top, the political uh, top uh, in the country. It has become a new normal in the India, be it Pegasus, whatever has been done, whatever the investigation or the things, the denial happened in the parliament that finally uh, the government said has not come clear that why the journalists were on uh, this surveillance. So this has come from the top. So that's that's a basic change which has happened that there is no agency where you can go for uh, justice or uh, how you can uh, fight for the freedom of uh, press or expression. So first point this, and secondly, I want to say that the impunity is, uh, is I, I don't have words to express the kind of impunity the violators are enjoying. And it is not, uh, it, it is uh, to the marginalized community, but even to the uh, major uh, uh, community, be it Hindu, be it other communities, any mob, the lynching mob is there that we have seen just in Delhi, uh, next to Delhi NCR, Noida, where a TV journalist who was uh, politically aligned with the uh, ruling class, he was threatened and nothing happened. And then uh, because he just raised one point that to reduce the volume of uh, a religious function. So uh, what I feel that this lynching mob, which is being generated, be it the cow vigilance, be it this, they are taking the trolls uh, to all the sections. Definitely the minority and the uh, Dalit Adivasis are at the top. But uh, the kind of environment which has been made and because it is coming from the top that we have to understand, uh, that uh, impunity is uh, being uh, moved ahead.